In this video, we're going to write a C program that's going to read and list the files and subdirectories contained in a directory using the POSIX library in C. So for example, right now in this directory, we have four files and two subdirectories. We want our C program to be able to read and list these files and these subdirectories. The first thing we'll do is include the dirent.h library. This is the library that's part of the POSIX library that allows us to open, read, and close directories. So the first thing we'll do is create this dir pointer directory variable. This is a directory stream variable. It's going to allow us to open a directory, read the files and subdirectories within that directory, and then close it. We'll also create this struct dirent pointer entry variable. As we read each entry in the directory, whether it's a file or a directory or something else, entry will be a pointer to a struct with different members representing what that entry is. So whether it's a file, its size, its name, and things like that. So the first thing we'll do is call open dir to open the directory stream. So we'll say directory is equal to open dir, and we'll just say period here for the current working directory. And open dir is gonna have a return value that's going to be a directory stream. And we're gonna assign that to directory here. So it's a little bit like opening a file in some sense. We'll make sure that open dir was successful. So if open dir fails, it's gonna return null. So if directory is equal to null, we know something has gone wrong in the opening of the directory. And we'll print out an error message and we'll exit with an error status. So we'll say error opening directory backslash n, and then we're gonna return one. We're going to return one instead of returning zero because returning one is a signal to the shell here, to the terminal, that something has gone wrong in the execution of our program. Next, we're gonna read each entry in the directory. So we'll say while entry is equal to read dir directory doesn't equal null. So what's going on here is a little bit like accessing a file, where what we're doing is repeatedly calling read dir with this directory stream to read in the next entry in the directory. And we're gonna take the result and we're gonna store it into entry. An entry is gonna be a pointer to this struct dirent, a struct that represents this entry in the directory. Now eventually what's gonna happen is read dir is gonna return null because it runs out of entries in the directory to read. At that point, we're gonna stop the execution of the loop. Within the loop body though, so long as the loop is running, we can do whatever we want with each entry. Like for example, print out the name of each entry. Now this expression here is gonna take on the value of whatever read dir stores into entry. So whatever is assigned to entry, that's what this expression is going to take on. That's how assignment works in C. That's why here we have this assignment statement within the loop condition, but then we check to see whether that value was null or not. And so long as it's not null, so long as read dir has not returned null, that means there's more entries to read in the directory. And so we're gonna continue. Now, once read dir does return null, this expression will take on the value null, and that's when we're gonna stop. In the loop body, for now, let's just actually print out the name of each entry. So we'll say printf percent s backslash n, and we'll say entry arrow d underscore name. So entry is gonna be a pointer to a struct. And that struct has a member d underscore name that's going to be the name of the entry, whether it's a file or directory or something else. Next, we'll close the directory. So we'll say if close dir directory is equal to negative one. 
So close DIR will close the directory stream. Again, sort of like when we're working with files, when we close a file stream. If close DIR fails, it's gonna return negative one. So if it fails, again, we'll print out an error message and we'll exit with an error status. So we'll say printf error closing directory backslash n, and again, we'll return one. So we'll save this and now let's give our program a try. So we'll compile the program. And if we look at our directory now, there is this extra executable program here now. We'll run it and we get back the names of all the entries in the directory. So we have our files here, including the C program file and the executable. We also have our subdirectories and we have these as well. This period here represents the current working directory. These two periods here represent the parent directory. Let's do one more thing. Let's try to look at whether the type of the entry is a directory or a regular file. So the entry struct has another member called D underscore type. We can look at that to look at the type of the entry. So we'll say if entry arrow D underscore type is equal to DT underscore reg, this here is a constant. And we're checking to see if the type of this entry is a regular file. If it is, we'll print out file colon, and then we'll print out the name of the entry. So that way it's clear that this is a file name that we're printing out. We'll have an else if case here. We'll say else if entry D type member is equal to DT underscore DIR. So DT underscore DIR is another constant. And so this condition will be true when the current entry is a directory. So again, we'll print out this time DIR colon, and then we'll output the name of the directory. To make it clear that this is a directory that we're printing out here. So we'll save this now. We'll recompile our program and then we'll run it. And now we can see which things are files and which things are directories. So these here are files and these here are directories. Now, right now our program is working for the current working directory. That's what this dot here means. We could make this work for other directories. So for example, I have a directory library slash Perl on my system. We could recompile the program and now it's going to work for that directory. And we can see that underneath this library Perl directory, we have two directories with different versions of Perl, it looks like. So this is how we can read and list the files and directories contained in a directory using the POSIX library in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.